Hi everyone, it's Emily with another Grass River Micro Class. Today I thought it'd be fun to talk about how to identify deciduous trees when they don't have any leaves, which is the case for about seven months of the year up here and even still in May, happy May by the way, in May they don't have leaves. So we're going to talk mostly about tree bark and there are other ways to identify them too like branching patterns we'll talk about a little bit and even buds but buds are kind of a whole thing unto themselves um, that's kind of like a whole, that would be a whole nother micro class so we're just going to talk about bark and branching patterns today so first i wanted to show you guys this is a weeping willow and it's actually not native to the u.s uh, i came over from asia but it's a common one in people's yards um so i wanted to show you guys it and obviously weeping willows have those nice weeping branches which is um you can clue in on to identify them but also the bark is really distinct super furrowed super super furrowed deep grooves almost like braided um and also oftentimes willow weeping willows grow out of multiple trunks um and they'll have little suckers which this one doesn't but they'll have little suckers tiny little branches coming off um on like a dead part of the trunk often all right so here we have a red maple um and we have multiple species of maple trees in michigan but the most common two are red maple and sugar maple and you know, you might wanna tell the difference between a red maple and a sugar maple if you make your own maple syrup um, for tapping your trees. Sugar maples tend to have a slightly higher percentage of sugar in their sap, so they're better for tapping because you don't have to spend as much time boiling it down into syrup. So, but this is a red maple. Um, and I'll admit that it's a little difficult, actually it's quite difficult to tell them apart bark-wise, red maple versus sugar maple, at least I have a hard time with it. Um, but there are a few characteristics that you can key in on. Um, the first one is red maple bark um, tends to be slightly, it has a slight reddish cast. And I know that that's not readily apparent right now, but if you see a red maple and a sugar maple side by side, you can tell that the sugar maple's bark is a little bit more honey colored, a little bit more golden brown than the red maple, which is more burgundy. Um, Another thing is if you ever see something that looks almost like a bullseye or like an eye on um, on a background of tree bark that otherwise looks kind of like this, like a little bit scaly, furrowy, peeling, um, you can bet that that's a red maple. That's a red maple characteristic, those um, targets or bullseyes. Um, let's see. Another thing is just based on habitat. Red maples love to live in places where the water doesn't drain quite as much. So swamps are really great for red maples or otherwise lowland forests. Um, sugar maples are much more upland forest. Um, they tend to co-dominate with beech in our like upland, you know, like spring ephemeral trillium ramp sort of woods that you think of. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, another thing is that, um, this time of year, at least, red maples have flowers on their trees and sugar maples don't. Red maples flower much earlier than sugar maples. Um, and that's important. They're one of the first things to bloom, sometimes, you know, as early as March. Um, and that's important for our local pollinators that need a good nectar source that early in the season. All right, and this is a sugar maple. Um, and I don't know if you can tell the difference from the last tree we looked at, the red maple, but it is slightly more golden in color, um, more richer brown, less burgundy cast to it. Um, and this is a younger tree than the red maple, and I should mention that tree bark changes as trees um, age. They generally start um, quite smooth when they're small saplings, and then they get more textured as they get older if the bark is a textured bark and not something like a beech, which is generally um, really smooth. So sugar maple here. Um, and I wanted to show you guys, if you're really having a hard time identifying sugar maple versus red maple based on the bark, look around right under the tree. See if you can find any old leaves from last year. And obviously this won't really help you in the winter time when everything's covered with snow, but in the fall 
or the spring it can help. Um, and a major difference between sugar maple and red maple leaves is that the sinuses, the parts between the lobes, um, the sugar maple is curved like a U, so you can think of sugar has a U in it. And then the red maple is more V-shaped, it definitely comes to a point in there in the sinus. So another thing I wanted to mention about maples is that they have opposite branching, which is not very common in the tree world. And basically that means that along the trunk, the large branches come out directly opposite of each other. Along a branch, the twigs come out exactly opposite of each other. And then also along the twig, the leaves come out exactly opposite of each other. Um, and that's a really easy way to identify if something's a maple. Also ash do that around here and dogwoods too. But dogwoods are generally much smaller, more shrubby. And then ash, unfortunately, you rarely see, rarely, rarely, rarely see a healthy, large, older ash still standing due to emerald ash borer. So if you're in the woods and you see a tree that has opposite branching, you can be pretty sure around here that it's a maple. This is an aspen tree um, and this is, I think, one of the easiest trees to identify based on their bark. Um, you can see at the bottom down here, it's got these furrows. And on a more mature aspen, those furrows can reach, you know, higher than head height even. Um, but then above those furrows, it's quite smooth. And um, it's got these shapes that remind me always of like the evil eye shape, um, like right here, these kind of like knots. Um, and we've had, we have two kinds of, of aspen here in northern Michigan. We have quaking aspen and big tooth aspen. And really the bark looks really similar. Big tooth aspen bark is slightly darker. Um, quaking aspen bark is really light. Like it's almost easy to mistake it at first glance for white birch. It's that white, but of course it doesn't peel. The bark doesn't peel at all like white birch. Um, yeah, and a neat fun fact about aspen is that they reproduce vegetatively. So they send up new shoots from the roots. So I'm standing in a small grove of aspens right now and they're all probably clones of each other because they reproduce vegetatively. Um, so they all have the same DNA. And um, actually the largest single land organism in the world is a quaking aspen. Um, it's a pure stand that covers 106 acres somewhere in Utah. Um, so yeah, really neat trees that often grow in stands. This is basswood, also called linden. Um, and oftentimes these trunks, there's often multiple trunks growing from the same mother plant. Um, this one had its twin fall over um, last year. But uh, yeah, the bark is really heavily striated. The furrows aren't that deep. Um, but I think what's really unique about basswood is that it has like little speckles on, on the bark. And it's kind of hard to see, but like right here, right here, right here, it's got these little indentations all over the bark. Um, and that's an easy way to identify basswood. Another fun thing about basswood is that um, its leaves are actually edible, it's young leaves. So you might wanna take a look around your yard and see if you have any basswood plants because the leaves um, in just a couple weeks, um, maybe a week or two, will begin, begin to bud out. And when they're really small, they taste, um, they taste almost like cucumber. They have a slight mucilaginous texture to them, um, but just ignore that and focus on the cucumber taste. Um, they're quite delicious. Here's a black cherry tree. Uh, this is the largest species of the cherry family and it's a common tree that's kind of interspersed um, between maples and beeches in an upland forest. And this guy's got really distinct bark. Um, these uh, really scaly, curled up sort of pieces um, are often likened to burnt potato chips. Um, yeah, so super distinctive on this guy. Here's a beech tree, and this is, um, like I mentioned before, one of the co-dominants. Um, this and sugar maple in um, upland sort of music, which means like middle of the road in terms not, of not too dry, not too wet forests in Northern Michigan. 
um, and super smooth bark, um, gray, really gray, and um, it does sometimes have these little knots or almost eye looking things like aspen does. And I guess it's possible to confuse this tree with aspen, but it won't have the furrows on the bottom um, of the bark like an aspen would. And this tree is really important for wildlife. Um, it has huge masts of nuts, um, if not every fall, every other fall. Um, and those nuts are really, those beech nuts are really important for wildlife species ranging from deer to black bears to grouse to obviously squirrels, um, raccoons. Yeah, really important trees. Another great thing about beech trees is that you don't have to just rely on the bark to identify them because oftentimes, especially the saplings in a forest, will hang on to last year's leaves um, until the new leaves bud out in the spring. Um, so if you see a tree in the wintertime with kind of um, usually like bronze, orangey colored, these ones are really dried out, so they're white-ish. Um, but bronze, orangey colored, kind of football shaped leaves that are curled up and dead on a tree in the middle of winter, you can pretty much bet that that is a beech tree. Okay, so this is an ash tree um, and I'm showing you a log because oftentimes this is how you see them um, nowadays as logs because um, they've been pretty devastated by the emerald ash borer, um, which is an invasive insect pest from Asia. Um, the bark though is really distinctive of ash trees. It's got these thin um, but really fine sort of furrows that form a diamond pattern, um, look kind of braided, almost like fishnets. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, ash trees are one of those trees like maples um, that have opposite branching, um, not alternate. So the twigs are directly across each other from the branch. Um, and we have um, a few species of ash trees in Michigan. The two most common are green ash and white ash. And this is probably a white ash um, because we're in sort of an upland forest that's dominated by maple and beech right now. Um, and like black cherry trees, ash trees were um, kind of a common interspersed tree um, in these upland forests. And then green ash um, are pretty much exclusively bottomland trees. They love to grow along creeks and stream banks in the riparian vegetation. Um, I don't have a great way to tell them apart based on the bark, but um, that uh, habitat difference should help you guys out. All right, everyone, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Um, take time this weekend, you know, it's gonna be beautiful. Get out and enjoy the birds and the wildflowers and the tree bark. Um, I hope you learned something. Uh, we'll see you next week. Stay safe, bye.